Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Guys, I have this 2000 watt inverter from MWXNE. So I'll put the link down below. Appreciate you using my links. Uh, Freeway Support Channel doesn't cost you anything. Guys, inverters, uh, 2000 watt. I got a 3000 watt over here. Uh, you know, when inverters are running at low power, sometimes they don't work as great because they're designed for the higher power. So we want to check this at low power, something like under 100 watts. Uh, we just want to see how well it performs. Make sure it performs well with low power watts as well as high power watts. So um, yeah, this video, we're going to do a low power load, okay? And the next video, we'll do the high power. Well, we're going to need something bigger to get 2,000 watts. All right. Hey, let's come over here. I'm going to show you this setup, okay? And, um, yeah, let's do that. All right, guys. For this setup, I've got this load resistor. Ooh, it's pretty hot, actually. It's tied to this uh, power supply. I'm going to put 25 volts out, and I've got limited to 10 amps. Well, that's the max current. But here, when I turn it on... It's going to be about 3 amps, 76.6 watts, okay? So this power supply is powered by this inverter. So the load from this guy is coming from the inverter. So I can use the resistor to load this guy, and this guy is going to load this guy, okay? That way I can get an AC load on this. And it's a minimum load, like you saw, it's around 80 watts, okay? But I just want to see what this is. And by the way, there's the remote display. Pretty cool. And it's about 30C in here right now. Battery is fully charged because it's 15.1. It's not a battery. It's that power supply right over there. Let me show you. So it's this guy right here. It's a 6263B Hewlett Packard, which you know is now Keysight, right? Was Agilent. So the output's coming here. This guy's capable of well, it goes up to 10 amps and then great, you know, red lines into 12 amps. And I've got it set right here, but it goes up to 20 volts, red lines to 24. Okay, so it's great, like kind of a battery simulator, but it's limited by that power. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this stuff just to run a load. Okay. So I'm using my KPS meter to monitor the input. The input's just clamped here. Since we're not doing a big load, I, I'm safe just clamping it like this. Fans aren't gonna kick on or anything. I've been testing. Fans never turn on because it's minimal load, okay? But like right now it says 15 volts. This says 15.1, okay? So I'm sure it's like an average, you know, it takes a lot of samples and where this guy's jumping around, this guy probably takes a lot of samples, stores it, kind of a peak charge, where this guy is probably a little bit more accurate. It's probably a little bit less than 15. All right, so up here, I'm gonna use my audio precision input to measure the power. So right here with no load, it's 0.9% THD plus noise. And it's I've got it set for 59.7 because that's where the scope, when I had it set here, it said about 59.66 or something, so that's why I set it there, okay? So that's the scope waveform. And you can see on the bottom, it's got kind of a little slant. Top looks pretty shiny soil. It looks pretty darn clean, actually, right? Right here, 0.9, it's almost 1% because of that little, um, you know, angle right there, okay? So um, 122 volts, and this guy up here, it says 123. I mean, down here it says 122 and it's bouncing around because it's, you know, up here it's taking a more constant reading. So I can get more waveforms on the screen to get, you know, a little bit better accuracy if I wanted. But anyway, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to go to Spectrum. And the Spectrum looks like that. Okay. So here's the 60 hertz and here's our harmonics. And it's 20 dB per decade. So we got 20, 40. So they're all, you know, the next highest peak is about 40 dBs. Okay. 
So, and even in our odd harmonics, you know, there's some, there's not a big difference between them. It's just kind of a wavy thing. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the load. Watch that. Okay. That's about 77 watts load. And now the odd harmonics look a little taller. Even harmonics kind of drop down. So no load is actually kind of a tough, tougher test. See, there's less peaks up here. Now come down here because the odd harmonics jumped up, it's 2.6%. So it went from less than one to 2.6, 120 volts, 59.7. Over there, you can see the voltage and the current setting. So, okay, down here, you can see that coming in, it's dropped down 14.3. Right here, that's a green, 123 out, that's 73 watts. Okay, that's output. And this guy's saying he's putting out 76.7. So um, there's a little difference between the two, but this resistor is gonna, get, 200 watt resistor, but it's going to get really hot at 76 watts sitting here in open air. So there we go, guys. Now, here, let's go look at the voltage waveform. Okay, let's look at the voltage waveform up here. Okay. And that's where the voltage looks like. Okay, so now the top and bottom are kind of flat topped a little bit. And I'll spread it out just a little bit so it make it a little easier to see. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the load so you can watch it. Top goes more sinusoidal, bottom's more squared. Now see it says 122 down there in the bottom left. And turn it on, and it's about 122 again. So does a good job of putting out the right voltage. Okay, now let's watch this display as I turn on and off the load. Okay, sitting 73 watts, watch me turn it off. It kind of jumps up to 126 and then goes back to about 121. And then it actually drops down and then it comes back up. So it kind of, you know, has to sit there and self-adjust. Some of that is just internal measurement, I think, because I don't know if I see that in the waveform. So um, I think it's the measurements catching up. It's probably a transient that gets delayed in the measurement. So now we're 15 volts. Watch, I'm going to turn on the load. And I don't, you see, I think this thing actually shows us peak what's going on inside the power supply because on the output, on the scope, I don't see it jumping up like that, 139. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Here, I'll go up and show you. Okay, there's a waveform. I'll turn it off. Now, look, I'll capture a whole bunch of waveforms so we can watch it. So we can see if things are jumping up or jumping down, okay? Okay, here's the load. Yeah, see that little bit of a dip? Now turn it off and there's a little bit of a rise, right? Dip, rise, dip, rise. You see what I'm talking about, right? It's a little bit, of, it's not bad at all. I'll turn it on and off real fast. Pretty well controlled. All right, guys, just give you an idea of what the spectrum looks like off the power right off my receptacle off the wall. There's the voltage, and look, the auto harmonics are pretty high, right? Now, here, let me show you the voltage waveform because it actually looks pretty good. So it's interesting. It's it doesn't it's kind of distorted a little bit, but and it kind of almost looks too rounded at the top. It's uh, It looks clean, but because of, you know, not looking quite right, the spectrum, here, let's look at that. The spectrum actually makes it look, you know, not that great. So it's interesting, right? So the power off your wall isn't super clean. It's not bad at all but it does have harmonic distortion. Okay, guys, the sensitivity of the meter is uh, about 60 watts. So 
it waits until you get about 60 watts power, okay? And then, I think we should be there. There we are, 61 watts. Uh, so yeah, so once you get about 60 watts, then the display will come on and give you the wattage. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be like zero. So if I just drop it a little bit, Okay, I dropped, yeah, see, I just dropped it uh, two volts. So if I go up to two volts, come back over 61 watts, all right? Now the efficiency at this point is about, it's about 61.3%. So it's a very low load. And so that's why it's so low now. Uh, the input power is 14.25 volts, roughly, and the current is 6.8 amps. So I've got the current from that power supply up there coming down into here and coming out here. And so that's my current. And then the KPS meter is measuring right here at the terminals. So I'm looking at the voltage after the voltage drop through the meter and through the leads and all that stuff. Okay, so it's about 97.72 watts in that and about 60 watts out, maybe 61. Maybe the efficiency is a little bit better, 61%, but it's pretty darn close. Now, I'm also looking at the, the differential probe is coming in here, okay? It's this differential probe right here, MixSig, DP10013. And the current probe is in channel two, and that's the MixSig ACP1000. We're in the uh, highest resolution setting right here. Okay, so so I've got this gray lead in the back, of, you know, in the inverter. Okay, and it comes out here and it's broken out here, so I can take voltage readings with these two differential probes, and then I can also take the current reading going down to these leads here, and then up here to the plug. So it's a little bit wonky, but yeah, it's just a real temporary setup for this measurement. So, but look at this, the power quality, pretty cool. So this is a current, the big blue spikes, you know, so you can tell that power supply that we're powering right here has a low frequency switcher, diodes turning on and off, uh, filling up a bulk capacitor, because you can see the big old spiky currents as they're turning on and off. and you can see the sinusoidal yellow voltage that's coming out, the 120 volts, 122 volts. And down here, well, it says 121.8, I guess, has all these statistics and all this crest factors, all kinds of information down here. We have the current down here. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and here's the power. Uh, multiplying these two together, you get these spikes of power. Because now if we had active power factor correction in this power supply right here, then it wouldn't be doing that. So uh, it's one amp coming out. So it's about 100 VA, but, you know, about 70 something watts coming into this. So uh, power factor is not that great, but it's all low power. So that's kind of why. So I just want to show you the setup and let's move on. All right, guys. So what do you think? Um, now... The efficiency at low power is always going to be not as good at, as it will be at higher powers. And it's not a big deal because, like, right now I haven't even heard the fans go on, you know, in this thing yet. So we're going to have to get some power up so we can start dissipating some heat. And then the fans will turn on. It'll be interesting to see how much power it takes to turn on the fans. So far, it's testing really well. Uh, low power modes, been good. So, yeah, nice and clean. So, and you know, even with this load, with this power supply, it doesn't have a active power factor correction. It has a low frequency switch on the front end, just, you know, bridge rectifier, you know, firing those diodes and, uh, you know, commutating those diodes and causing those big pulsating currents. So even with that, the sine wave looked pretty good. So happy so far. Uh, next video, we're going to do some high power stuff. I got some ideas. One thing I think we're going to need is one of my batteries down here to power this thing because I don't have a 2,000 watt power supply. So, 
Yeah. And I uh, got some ideas about some different loads to do. But that's what we want to do. We want to pair this with a battery, big lithium battery. And, you know, then maybe even a solar panel. I've got some chargers here. Yeah, we're going to slowly build up the system. So it'll be kind of fun. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Two big thumbs up to my patrons, to my YouTube members, and Danny for being a team member. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Um, all right, guys. Yeah, it's been fun. It's nice inverter. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Appreciate you watching. See you next time.